A few days ago, somewhere in the house, I started to hear a faint scratching noise on the wall. As my house was in a remote forest, I searched the whole house to see if it was the sound of a wild animal, but I couldn't find a trace of an animal anywhere. And the sound was getting louder day by day. I was able to locate the source of the sound in four days, when, as usual, I was focusing on carpentry in the yard. Suddenly, the saw I was using broke apart, and so I headed to the basement, where I hadn't been for a long time, to get a spare saw. In the basement, I was rummaging through my dusty toolbox, shining my flashlight, and I heard the sound that had been bothering me for days right behind me. I was so surprised that my whole body stiffened, and I quickly turned around to shine the flashlight towards where the sound was coming from. But nothing was there. I went up to the wall and listened with my ear against it, and to my surprise, the sound was coming from the wall at a very close distance. It was like the sound of something scratching the wall with a sharp tool, but it didn't sound like a wild animal, as it came in regular intervals. This situation, in which I had no idea what was behind the concrete wall, was so creepy and frightening that I couldn't stay home. So I quickly packed my stuff and got out and called the police. I hear a scratching noise in the walls of the basement storage room. Something is about to break out from the wall. Now the police said that it's probably a wild animal, and they said they couldn't respond if it was just noise. I had no choice but to leave the forest and spend the night at the nearest motel. The next day, I returned home, grudgingly, with fear. When I returned to the house after just one day, it was a mess, as if someone had broken in. The kitchen and the living room were all covered with mud, and the refrigerator was wide open and all the food inside was gone. There were numerous footprints on the floor, which continued on to the basement. I took my gun out and carefully went down to the basement. To my surprise, there was a huge hole in the basement wall, and when I shined the flashlight at it, I couldn't see how deep it was. I called the police right away. After a while, they arrived and started searching the house. Many fingerprints were found in the house, but what was surprising was that all the fingerprints hadn't been registered, so even after checking, they couldn't be identified. One police officer said, It's estimated that there have been a total of eight intruders, but even if we tracked all the fingerprints, they haven't been registered. Besides, the shape of the fingerprints are quite unique. Then the officer looked through the hole in the basement with a flashlight and said, The depth of this hole cannot be measured at all, and it's too dangerous for a person to go inside for an investigation. We've never experienced this kind of situation before. It will take a bit to organize a search party. How about moving out first? Having worked as a carpenter, cutting the trees in the forest all my life, I had nowhere to go other than this place. I was afraid, but I had no choice but to plug the hole and decided to continue living there. After the cops had gone, I was left alone in the house. I covered the hole with a wooden board, nailed it firmly, and locked the basement door. Who the hell were the eight people who broke into my house that day? The house became silent as if nothing had happened, and no more sound was heard from the walls. For several days after that, I was startled even when I heard the slightest sound. But as time passed, the memories of the incident faded. A month later, when I returned home after going out to the woods to cut trees, I heard a strange noise from the basement. That sound was a sound I've never heard before, and it sounded like a snake. I pulled out my gun and carefully opened the basement door, when something suddenly came out and pounced on me, strangling me. It was a creepy creature with a bald head and skin, transparent enough to show all of its blood vessels. Its appearance was similar to that of a human. The creature was strangling and looking down at me, and it had a terrible appearance, with no black parts of the eyes. It wasn't long before several creatures began to surround me when I passed out. <sighs> How long has it been? When I woke up from the pain of my back being chafed, I saw the creatures grabbing my legs and dragging me into the subterranean ground. They were making an eerie hissing sound, and their transparent bodies were glowing green in the dark. 
The narrow passage in the underground gradually widened large enough for an adult to stand up and walk. There were many creatures gathered together. They crawled towards me and started fondling me. The creatures lifted me up and went deeper into the tunnel, where I saw a creature sitting with its head hanging low. I noticed it was the frailest creature, even at a glance, with a wrinkled body and bent back. The creature slowly lifted its head and looked at me, and its eyes resembled human eyes because it had blurry black irises. It was the only creature among the creatures to have black irises. Its eyes widened as it saw me, and it made strange noises. It began to speak in a strange language that I couldn't understand. Nana Luga Ani, Yonamu, Luga Uri, Kimaki, Ia Ani Munadu. What did you say? When I asked it, the creature started muttering incomprehensible words again, and the other creatures were watching us, holding their breath. I wondered if the language really even existed, so I took my phone out of my trouser pocket and turned on the voice translation app, but the translator didn't recognize the creature's words at all. So I turned on the recorder instead and recorded the creature's words. The creature, which was muttering unknown words, eventually made a hiss sound to the rest of the creatures. Then the creatures rushed to me and began to kneel down and bow. What is this? I was puzzled at this strange situation, and they brought a bunch of various insects, dead moles and tree roots and handed them to me. It seemed like they were sharing their food. It was only then that I realized that the creatures had no intention to kill me, and I gestured to them that I would not eat the food they brought me. Then, as if the creatures understood my words, they backed away for a while, and then brought a creature that looked like a female and thrust her on me. The female creature hissed and clung to my body. I shook it off in astonishment. I was so scared to be in this situation, and I wanted to get out quickly. So I cried and begged to them to let me go back home. Then they began to lead me back down the tunnel where we came in. Walking through the long tunnel, relying on the green light emitted by the creatures in the pitch darkness, was very arduous. After many twists and turns, I was able to get out again through the hole in the basement of my house. They sent the female creature out of the hole as well, and the female creature hissed and crawled around quickly inside the basement. I jumped out of the basement and quickly locked the door. Then the female creature started pounding hard on the door from inside. I called the police and explained the situation, and shortly after, the police and the search party arrived. The police carefully opened the basement door, and at that moment the creature jumped out and clung to me. I was so startled that I screamed, and when the police tried to remove the creature, the creature clung to me harder and bit my neck. As I screamed, holding my neck, the cop smashed the creature's head hard with a club and got it off of me. As soon as they dragged the creature out of the house, white smoke suddenly billowed from its transparent skin when it received sunlight. Soon, it burned black and died painfully on the spot. From that day on, I was investigated for a long period of time about what I had seen underground, and my house was frequented by many people involved. My house was surrounded by a police line, the corpse of the dead creature was autopsied, and it had organs resembling those of a human inside its translucent skin, but no lungs, and gill-like holes were pierced diagonally along the ribs. Experts speculated that they may have survived by breathing through the gills underground. In addition, they said that their eyesight was deteriorating, so they did not have irises and could barely identify objects by light. I submitted the file containing the voice of the creature recorded on my cell phone to the police, and numerous historians gathered to analyze the language. Surprisingly, it was not the language of the modern society, but the language of ancient North American Native Americans, and when translated, it meant, You are our first ancestor. We hid into the ground to outlive the war, and survived, generation after generation for a very long time. If I die, there will be no one who has learned the language. Teach your language to these people. The creatures were natives who hid underground to escape from an unknown war about 3,000 years ago. 
Over that long period of time, their bodies had developed to suit the underground environment, and they've become creatures. If people found out of their existence, it could cause social ramifications, so the government strictly controlled them from appearing in the media. I also had to write a memorandum to not disclose all the facts. My wounds from the creature's bites have almost healed, as they were stitched up at the hospital and treated regularly, and the nightmare-like memories of the day gradually faded off as well. Whew. I looked at my neck in the mirror and sighed in relief. I took off my clothes to take a shower, and there were strange holes in my ribs. What the... Astonished, I got closer to the mirror and, surprisingly, the skin of some parts of my body had turned transparent, revealing blue blood vessels. I went straight to the hospital, and all the doctors in the hospital rushed over to see my body, and they were shocked. They said that the disease is a rare one that they have never seen before. That was when I realized that my body was slowly changing into a creature after I was bitten. After returning home, I hid in agony due to my appearance that was changing terribly. After a long time, I mustered up the courage to stand in front of the mirror and found that the black irises in my eyes had faded. In addition, as my skin had turned transparent, it felt unbearably prickly and painful when exposed to ultraviolet rays. Now my body could no longer cut trees or go outside to the yard to do carpentry. By intuition, I realized I could only survive by going into the hole in the basement. I broke through the sealed basement door and began drilling the hole the police had filled with concrete. After drilling through the concrete continuously for a week, I heard sounds of people outside the basement when I was finally able to squeeze my body into the hole. Mr. Graham, it's the police. Please open the door. I came after receiving your medical records from the hospital. I heard your body is gradually changing. Are you all right? I crawled into the hole, ignoring the cops shouting. 